I don't know what that was. That was Elliot Smith. Miss Misery. Miss Misery. Yep. Okay, cool. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Great Measures. My name is Richard. This is Judson. Great I'm gonna, Measures. I'm going to introduce Judson to a new band today that he hasn't heard yet, a band called Trivium. Nope, hadn't heard them. Don't even know who that is. Don't know. No idea. It's a little band out of Florida. Uh, they've been around since about 99-ish. A little band. Uh, they're they're pretty popular. They're pretty popular. Oh, oh. Yeah. in terms of popularity, you mean? Yeah. Um, they're not like they did start out kind of young and little, though. They can't fit. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so the, uh, the lead vocalist, and he's also a guitar player. His name is Matt Heafy. I think it's Heafy is how you pronounce his last name. H-E-A-F-Y. Better be. Better be. Give you a little bit of background on how he got into the band real quick. Uh, this is from Wikipedia. Shout out to Wikipedia. <laughs> Following his guitar performance at the school's talent show, uh, at his high at his school's talent show, Heafy was asked to try out for Trivium by the band's original singer Brad Luter. Originally, he was accepted as lead guitarist despite being only 12 years old. Hmm, that's young. The other members were 15 to 16 at the time. Still, there's a uh, vast difference in maturity. Yeah. The band's original singer then quit in less than a month due to creative differences over the band's future musical direction. The drummer, Travis Smith, persuaded Heafy to do vocals, even though Heafy himself was unsure of his singing voice at the time. The band started looking for an external singer to fill in the position, but had trouble finding a suitable candidate. Eventually, Heafy agreed to become a full-time lead singer for Trivium, also keeping the position of lead guitarist for the band. He taught himself growling and screaming, especially doing so during the band's early years. Shout out to the album Ascendancy. Hey, that's, yeah. Weird. Um, yeah, it's such, such a good album. Uh, let's see. He admitted, he admitted using the techniques incorrectly most of his career, which ultimately caused severe damage to his vocal cords in the years leading up to the band's performance at Rock on the Range in 2014, where he blew his voice on stage. That's horrible. Yeah. Uh, so very talented. Uh, been around. I think this is this is from their tenth album. This uh, this song came out in twenty twenty one. The album is called "In the Court of the Dragon." Okay. I'm pretty sure that's what this is called. And this song is called "The Shadow of the Abattoir." Mm. Slaughterhouse. Mm. The Shadow of the Slaughterhouse. Sounds very bleak. Yeah. The shadow of death looming over. Yeah, right. I, um, something that sounded kind of funny to me when you were reading. Oh, God. <laughs> but just, so you got some 15 and 16-year-olds in a band and a 12-year-old. Uh -huh. And one of the guys leaves over creative differences. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like... Y'all know what you're creating. I mean, you know they what I'm saying? They were way ahead of their time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't like the musical direction this to this place. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we just came from over there. Right. Right. We don't have much. Of, the yeah. direction has just been three steps this way. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Ready? I mean, it's not funny. I mean, I hope he's doing okay in sure. life. Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. Go for it. Get on with it, bruh.
Well, how do you feel? I enjoyed or found interesting the latter half, the latter part of the song than the first part. Okay. I yeah. did not like. At first, I was not into it. It right. sounded, and I can't. You've made me listen to a lot of stuff I haven't ever heard before, so it's hard for me to remember yeah. what to compare it to. Just vocally, just the sound of it, to me, it was it was sort of generic. The beginning. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I felt the first time I heard the song, too. And then things ramp up, you know, and, and they, yeah. they show off their skills. and. Yeah, they go through all kinds of different... I mean, yeah. it was Megadeth there for a minute. Just They got some thrash elements, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, Megadethy. Sure. Megadeth-esque. Mm -hmm. um, guitar the guitar solo was ripping. Yeah. And then even when he comes back and, and starts to sing, uh, you know, and they even got to the double bass drum feature, it sounded like, you know, mm -hmm. where that was kind of out front. Um, I guess I can't say. I guess I didn't notice a lot from the bass side of it. Mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I've... It's really guitar heavy. But whatever. Um, yeah, I, at first I, I didn't. I, I was not into it at mm -hmm. first. I was just yeah. bored. Sure. I think. And I was trying. I was literally sitting here thinking, what else? Did, this sounds like something else. And I, I don't even want to start throwing out bands that sure. I, because I, I I could be so off. But um, it's got that kind of generic melody at the beginning. <laughs> I mean, it, it, there's, there's not a whole lot of frills to to the to the riff to the melody, but I like the way they bring it back at the end. Yeah, with the distorted guitars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Uh, if I have a choice in which direction we go with Trivium next, we go back to. My first knowledge of Trivium was their, I believe it was a 2004, 2003 album. They were like 18. They were young. Ascendancy was the name of that album. So they've been together forever. But since 99. But I mean, like, from their age standpoint. Yeah, like, I think they've made some, some changes, you know, throughout the lineup. But he's he's been there. Matt has been there from day one, pretty much. Wow. Um... I was trying to latch on to the lyrical content. Yeah, it's, uh, it's you know, uh, don't go searching for the battles. You won't find any beast to slay in the shadow of the abattoir. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most important part of the song. Uh, the ha uh ha. -huh. Yeah, I think it's, you know, the, the, the looming sense of slaughter and death the shadow of it just kind of casting over and uh, putting a damper on things, maybe. Sometimes maybe music, well, not maybe, for sure, lyrics just tend to paint a picture. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, you know, the Beatles, John Lennon during the... the <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying to compare it, but You're but good? but the uh, yellow man of custard dripping from a dead dog's eye is in "I Am the Walrus" on uh, Magical Mystery Tour. Their their psychedelic years when they got into mm -hmm. those two albums or when they whatever, because um, arguably it started before that. But either way, stop it, Richard. I hear you. So they're just. I think it's an abstract painting of words. You know, like makes you think of color it makes you have an image here and you put it all together and it doesn't necessarily go any further than that yeah so i was trying to like you know don't look for the don't look for the beast to the battle and don't look for the beast to slay or what you say yeah um don't go searching for the battle you won't find any beasts beasts to slay 
Yeah, what, what the hell does that mean? Mm -hmm. Um, and he talks about the shadows. The shadows are, are, are what's left, you know. At some point he says something about going to dust and then rising again. Yeah. Uh, I mean, is it just so simple as to be, tell us if not, death and just like so, so that they're, so that it's just so simple as to say, well, life is not something that you're fighting against, so to speak, that you're just all a bunch of pieces of meat that are going to be possible slaughtered anyway i think it's probably open for interpretation well, as all music is yeah but an abattoir is a slaughterhouse mm -hmm. so we're all just destined for slaughter anyway right i mean i'm trying to the abattoir what what a word it is uh, a word isn't it yeah i was wondering if they're gonna rhyme with it I don't know. They may have. I, I don't think they did. All the way. But, but it's one of those words you don't necessarily have to. You just throw it out there and it's mm -hmm. just cool. But it's a slaughterhouse in the shadow of the slaughterhouse. So you're... Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, try, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to throw something in there, but I think maybe, maybe it's just a generalized offering of... Perhaps life is not a battle as much as you think it is. You're just cattle to the slaughter, mm. like every every other piece of meat. Sure. Mm. I guess. Yeah, that's cool. We'll do some other trivium stuff. I mean, um, I mean, this interpretation can be totally trivial. Of, of, of triviums. All right. I mean, it's that a one. trivial trivium interpretation. <laughs> oh, thanks for watching, everybody. That was the shadow of the abattoir from Trivium. Out of Florida. Out of Florida. Yeah. You know that's from Florida? Leonard Skinner. Jesus. <laughs> you think they knew each other? No, probably not. We are Great Measures. My name is Richard. This is Judson. Great Measures, boy. Hope everybody has a wonderful day.